Good afternoon. Can I firstly welcome you here and then request that uh, mobile phones are switched off, please? <clears throat> I'm giving notice that the hearing is recorded. It's being filmed for subsequent broadcast on the Council's website. Therefore, by entering the chamber, you are consenting to being filmed and to the possible use of those images and sound recordings for broadcasting and or training purposes, as your images cannot be removed post-recording. If you are a member of the public and do not wish to have your image captured, you should sit in the appropriate seats in the public gallery at the rear of the chamber. If you have any queries regarding this, please speak to one of the council staff. There are no fire drills scheduled, so if the alarm is heard, um, the exits are clearly marked if the fire alarm sounds. Um, I'm Councillor Janice Howard, and I will ask my colleagues on the bench to introduce themselves. I'm Councillor Pauline Cowper. And I'm Councillor Nick Draper. Uh, I'm Guy Bishop, the legal advisor to the committee. Amy Dimitrescu, Democratic Services. The subcommittee will follow the hearing procedures, a copy of which was included in the notice pack sent to you. I'm now going to ask the legal advisor to inform those present that the subcommittee had a briefing prior to the hearing? Uh, yes, it, it, just a legal norm, um, just explaining to you that um, the committee re uh, sits uh, before the meeting to read the papers and uh, make sure that they've read all the documents and uh, your application fully so that they can make a proper decision. Um, in meeting with them, um, I referred them to Councillor Kirby's representation as well as various bits and pieces of your application. Um, for the licensing team, are, are there any technical issues you feel should be brought to our attention? My name's Elizabeth MacDonald. I don't think there's anything that isn't already in the application pack. Uh, I would now like the applicant to take the floor and present and maybe introduce yourself as well. The silver button, is that right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. brilliant. <laughs> my name is Roshan Ashat, and I'll be representing my dad today here, uh, Ashish Ashat, uh, on, on this case today. Uh, so it's just here, I'm just here because of the language problem. Uh, so I'm just representing that. Um, so do you to go ahead and, yeah. So I think um, what was brought forward was the, um, the antisocial behaviour. Uh, I think that's what someone commented uh, for our application. Um, I just wanted to point out that obviously eating is not an antisocial behaviour. Um, we've been open for many years uh, in that area and um, we don't serve alcohol at all. Um, we serve hot food um, um, and um, we don't serve to, if we know someone is drunk or behaving antisocial, we won't serve them, we won't even allow them inside the shop. Um, first of all, we don't even get anyone in that sort of state in that area, um, especially because there's literally no one there that causes any problems um, and um, if, if we do see anything like that um, my dad knows the people who work around there knows that they're not to serve them or not even allow them inside and um, and we don't allow people to come in into the shop uh, in groups uh, we have the right to stop them if they're in groups and um, uh, maybe four or five years ago there were people hanging around in groups but the last three years three to four years there's literally all that has stopped um, and um, school children, we allow them two at a time. Uh, so that's another thing that we have done. Um, there is nine CCTV cameras. Uh, there's two outside and the remaining uh, seven are inside uh, that record. Uh, and we are always ready to provide these details, these information to the local authority or the police if we have to. Uh, once we did uh, to catch a, a, a number plate and because the CCTVs are placed in a way that it catches the front of the shop as well as the street. 
Uh, so we did um, provide uh, CCTV, I think about a year and a half ago, uh, to the police. Um, so we did, we are always willing to help uh, local authority and, and um, uh, we've got a massive sign, so I will pass these around in a bit. Um, so we've got a sign around the shop. Um, this is just for our, our own happiness. It just says, um, notice, please leave the premises quietly to avoid disturbing the local residents. Thank you. Uh, so that's literally on the side of the wall. Um, it's just a little message for our customers. They don't make any noise when they leave, but it's just there uh, to just respect uh, respect the neighbours. Um, there is not no smoking uh, allowed in the area as well um, and um, just to mention about the other things uh, yeah so we have the main link that connects Gatwick Airport to central London the, that connects through London Road uh, so we've we've got many cab cab drivers local taxis that goes past and this is our this has been their spot for food at 12 o'clock or 11 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock. So uh, we've been serving these people as well as their customers for, for many years. And um, there is also a 24-hour tube station a couple of miles down the, down the road, uh, Tooting Broadway Station. Um, and um, there is around 32 buses that go past our shop hourly, uh, 16 in each way, uh, until 12.46 uh, a.m., in the morning so these are people that are coming back from enjoying the London nightlife or coming back from work I think majority 80% I would say are coming back from work um, because we do have a chat with them after and they tell us about the day and the, and the work life um, we've got a, a tooting railway station which is literally less than a minute walk uh, from our shop I think about 30 seconds um, I think that operates until um, I think 11.45 is the last train uh, there so that's another thing that's that's there uh, and then we've got a 264 bus that's a 24-hour bus that connects St George's Hospital all the way through Mitcham, Carshalton all the way up to Croydon so we've got we've got a lot of um, patients and nurses coming through that bus who stop by because we've, our bus stop is literally outside our shop who get food food for themselves at night time um, and the bus 44 and 77 that's the last stop so that come, comes straight from Victoria uh, I believe Victoria and Stockwell I think it yeah. is so that stops literally outside our shop uh, and they those people so mainly we cater for, for food for people who work uh, enjoying the nightlife yeah, so um, so we've also been serving for a loads of uh, paramedics uh, who stop by police officers who stop by um, uh, and, and um, we've got a lot of people coming from Wimbledon Theatre as well and uh, that's another thing that we get um, I think the previous um, uh, nice. they were allowed until five o'clock uh, but we don't really want until five o'clock I mean you know we don't want to serve sure. food and I think the maximum we want to do is two o'clock which we thought was reasonable and uh, we didn't just come out with this number just randomly, but we thought we spoke to the customers that we get. We asked them we sp for, for the past year. We've been speaking to them as well, finding out what time they finish work, uh, what time they usually pass the shop. So, and they said two, two thirty. So we thought two sounds reasonable. Um, that's that. And um, I mean, it's, it does say you know, on, on the notice it says you know it's antisocial behaviour. But there's loads of pubs there that sell alcohol that's allowed to open to two o'clock. And we serve food, so I, I found it really hard to understand. You know, places that serve, you know, mu alcohol and loud music are allowed to open until two o'clock, but places that sells food to the local resident need to be shut at eleven, which, which I didn't really understand. So what places um, are open till two? Uh, the Gorringe Park pub, which is located three shops next to us, on the right, um, sure. and the Brick and liquor which is also on the Mitcham Road which is on Mitcham Road actually that's open to 12 and 2 on the week weekends and that's that and, yeah, the shop, yeah. the and there's an, a, a, a kebab shop which is literally opposite I will all pass these pictures around in a minute um, they are open to 4 o'clock in, uh, in the morning literally opposite us and there's another shop, which is chicken shop, opposite us. Two. They decide to open to whenever they want. They're sometimes they close at two o'clock, three o'clock, four. 
So, I mean, we, we, we've got food rating at, at five star, which my dad has worked very hard over the, over the past four years to get to that stage. And then, you know, getting told to close at 11 o'clock. So, I mean, that's our busiest period. Well, not the busiest, but we've been serving for some of our ma main Rent customers. And... Um, Yeah, so I just I just don't think that anything stated reflects to what we do. Uh, just, so I will just pass you. Want to pass these pictures around now, or yeah, can I? We also have a screen uh, that's fitted inside the shop at the front uh, just to let people know that they are being filmed and so they it's not just a camera that you know it can be a dummy or anything uh, but this screen actually shows them that they're being lively recorded so it's just a, it's a thing for them to think about as well so they know and we've got a main street camera that's I think it's an it's automatic camera that gets operated by local authority I don't know, probably the police that spins like crazy sometimes you know just recording the whole area so no There's, customers are very good. Uh, yeah, customers so we've been, yeah. all our class customers are mainly, I would say, working people, work work night, and they come back. So, uh, yeah, that's it, I think I'll say. Uh, any questions from my colleagues uh, alongside me? If I may, Chair? Uh, hi. Um, just, just to get me straight, you're... You haven't opened before after eleven o'clock before now. It's, it's, this is a fresh application, is it? Okay. Now, I, I, I just wondered how you were aware of the trade that was around after eleven o'clock at night. Um, yeah, yeah. Been uh, uh, is that working? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. So the way he said that, that we, we did open to 11, 12.30 to 12 o'clock sometimes, and even 12.30 sometimes, but this was just an off weekend thing, not knowing there was a license thing that we had to follow. So as soon as we were told from that day, we've stopped. Uh, I was actually on holiday. My dad gives me a call and says, we, you know that we have to close at 11 o'clock. And I said, what, really? So since that day, he's, I think it was in December, December, yeah. yeah, it was in December sometime. Uh, so since oh, wow. then, we closed 10 to 11, so it leaves enough time for the staff to leave. Don't worry, I'm not judging you, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> um, the question that I came in here going to ask, uh, I, I'm, I, I found it very interesting you talking about the kind of literally passing trade. Do you think there are people on the street at 11 o'clock who would want to be coming in specifically? Uh, and you could probably answer that in, in, in context. Do you do, you do a, a delivery service as well? Fine, okay. Are you uh, anticipating a large proportion of delivery or, or do you reckon you'll get a lot of over-the-counter sales as well? This is the thing, I think because of the... 11 o'clock. Uh, oh, yeah, the delivery shuts at 11 o'clock. Yeah. Yes, so they don't serve two in border. So d places like Deliveroo, and I, th I believe Uber Eats, uh, we haven't started Del Del Uber Eats yet, but Deliveroo is the one that we've been doing at the moment, and they shut, up, shut two in area uh, at 11 o'clock. So, yeah, no one is allowed to place a, any order, I think, quarter to, quarter to 11. Yeah, so the security can't serve. It is, yeah, yeah. Uh, 
sorry, uh, your um, at eleven o'clock at night at that at that time, are, are you aware of there being a lot of count, uh, customers on the street who who want to be who want to be eating with you? Yeah, because um, that area is busy. I mean, people probably finishing work. So as I said, um, there is a high bus route that goes and the last past. Stop and the zone is there, like, uh, loads of last area. stops. Um, it's, it's literally between Croydon and Tootin, one of the busiest areas. So at 11 o'clock, there is a lot of people, especially in this weather. So it's about summer, it, it just goes crazy. Yeah, but there are people around enjoying the park, which is right next to us. And uh, it's a beautiful park called Fixed Marsh Park, park uh, right next to us within a couple of minutes walk so and that the railway is another thing i, th I would say uh, that's what that's where we get most of our cu customers from both railway and the 24-hour tube station tooting broadway i have a question um you've applied for a license till 2 a.m for seven days a week um can you explain your thoughts around Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, which are traditionally much quieter and many premises don't even open on a Monday night. It's, it's a valid point that you have, but um, it's the area is very busy. I mean, the shops opposite us, uh, especially in the last, since December, we've been closing up 11 <coughs> on the dot or 10, 10 to 11. And um, the amount of customers they get at these times is you'll be surprised to see the mountain because I think it's because you get free parking in that area so that brings a lot of people by car or bus again and then the train routes so um, with those two shops uh, and another couple just down the road and uh, there's plenty of shops and you'd be surprised to see how many people there will be in, that, in those shops at two o'clock in the morning uh, and sometimes I've seen people just run people literally close the door at two o'clock because they've run out of food for that day close yeah Uh, yes, <coughs> yes, I have, <coughs> excuse me, I have a question. Um, and if, if I'm right, you seem to imply that a lot of restaurants close to you, do excuse me, <coughs> open uh, till fairly early in the morning, much more so than you're asking to. Um, is that a fact or um, is that just what you think? think? On the yellow pages, so you can check these. Uh, or if you just type in the, the pictures I've given you, I think there's pictures have the name of the, the shops, the two shops that's literally opposite us. If you type that in Google, the first thing comes up is the, the time they open up to. Uh, so they are the kebab shop 100% I know that they are open till 4 o'clock every single day without without stopping uh, for the past 4 or 5 years uh, uh, long long years long, long, more than uh, 17 years ok yeah well, more than 17 years because we've been living in Mitcham for since 2001 so we've known that shop for, for a very really, really long time uh, but the chicken shop um, they I think I believe they have a time till 4 o'clock that's just me this is what I think, but they're open till two o'clock, three o'clock. Sometimes they even shut at one o'clock. I think it depends on who's available as a staff and if, if it's busy or not. Can I ask the licensing team for any comments or clarification? I don't really know what you'd like me to clarify I, I think that there used to be a license that went till five at that address that is no longer in use um, so that that is a truth um, I can't say about the premises opposite I'd have to check our files and that's if they're in Merton because I know that there's a funny border there where the road um, one side of the road is Wandsworth isn't it and the other side is Merton and, and I don't know if the other side of where you are is Merton or Wandsworth but without checking our records, I can't tell you whether what he's saying is right. I, I can tell you that uh, um, uh, the south side of the railway bridge, um, both 
uh, both sides of the road are in Merton. Uh, the, the north side of the railway bridge, the right side, the, the eastern side is in Merton, the western side is in, in, in Wandsworth. All just down from, for the, the, from the railway bridge. So both sides are Merton. Well, I'd have to check our record to see what those were. Um, or if you don't want to give, give me the details, I can always check them later anyway, if you want me to. Uh, I take it the Gorringe hours are correct, at 2 a.m., I think. I have to double check them. I, I haven't checked them before I came down here. I didn't anticipate you wanting to know about the pubs. Do you have any further comments? Uh, I have no further legal advice I can give you. Um, obviously, you know that when you're making a decision, you have to um, consider the evidence that's been put in front of you and what you've heard from the applicants. Um, but at the same time, obviously, you're promoting the licensing objectives, making a decision that's both appropriate and proportionate. That's it. Can I ask for any closing statement from the applicant? All I can say is, I mean, we've, we've done everything that we've, we could do to our potential till now. Uh, and there has never been a problem in that area. Uh, so because we've lived there for such a long time and uh, we know most of our customers there are close friends to us now and um we are we we did help the local authority and the, and the police and we will continue to do that if we have to um so but there isn't any problem for us to do that in the first place so, yeah that's it from us thank you any help on the yeah. subcommittee are now going to retire in closed session um, and if I can ask the legal advisor and the clerk to join me um, and I don't think there are any members of the public here so I think we're it's Eve. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yep. and if any members of the public are filming that they please ensure their cameras are now switched off until the subcommittee return to public session. I'd like to reopen the public session and I'm going to invite the legal officer to present the advice provided during the private session. So um, what we normally do is explain to you what legal advice has been given just so you're aware. Um, in, during the deliberations, the committee were looking at the representation, the evidence provided with that, as well as um, going over what you'd um, pre presented to them. Um, I gave them legal advice referring to a particular case, what's known as the Thwaites case, um, which requires um, a representation to um, provide sufficient evidence um, for a proper evidence to, 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 for the decision to be made. Um, and for the certain conditions or certain ways of looking at a decision. Um, and um, we were looking at that in connection with the actual um, Councillor Kirby's representation. And that's all the advice I gave. So we have come to a decision and we are going to grant it in its entirety. And the reasons for granting is the lack of evidence in Councillor Kirby's representation uh, and in addition there was no objection of any responsible authority especially the police to this application and I think on behalf of the subcommittee I'd like to wish you good luck and All parties should receive a written copy of the decision notice within five working days and I declare the hearing closed. Thank you.